Mr. Rock. All right, so uh, you always talk about resetting after every game. How's that gone if, after the SMU game this week? Well, obviously, come in Sunday and clean up the tape. Obviously, a lot of mistakes uh, we have to get corrected this week. And, um, you know, again, whether well, we've talked about it a lot, you know, whether uh, positive or negative, um, you got to learn from every, every game because uh, there's always going to be things we have to work on. Uh, and then and you got to put it in the past. Um, nothing's going to help us from the past, um, wins or losses. But, uh, you know, we got to rebound, have a great week, and, and really focus in on going 1 0 today, um, having the right preparation this week, and, um, you know, and get ready to play a football game. You know, you can't let an opponent beat you twice, that's for sure. And you feel good about the way your kids have handled that? They responded well. Obviously, very disappointed in the way we played. Um, Again, uh, it was on all three phases. Uh, you know, when execution took place, offensively we moved the ball pretty well up and down the field. Um, I don't think we punted until late in the first half and um, put some really good drives together. Uh, but just uh, mistakes, uh, you know, obviously in the red zone uh, killed us. Um, some turnovers, uh, missed snaps. Um, too many penalties got us behind chains just from um, an execution standpoint, uh, they did a good job of stemming right before the snap, and it, and it got us a few times. Um, uh, we we got to be better there. Uh, defensively, way too many explosives. I um, think uh, they had 11 plays that went for over 300 yards, and that's that's going to get you beat. And then obviously three third downs and longs, uh, three third and 15, 16, 17, um, where you know you have good calls and you're in brackets or double coverage. Um, you can't allow got to make a play like that, and so. Um, and special teams, you know, obviously had a block kick. So you're not gonna you're not gonna beat a team like that, um, you know, with all the mistakes that we had. And you have to give them credit. Uh, obviously, I'm disappointed for our fans, our alumni. Uh, that's not that's not the way. Uh, uh, we 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 didn't play our best, and every single day they deserve our best on Saturdays. I think our kids gave, gave great effort. Uh, the energy was good, all that. Just the execution, poor execution, and that's uh, something we have to improve on. Is there anything you can take away from you know the struggles in the red zone, you know, play calling, different things you could try, try to do to be better down there? Yeah, I mean, obviously it's something that uh, you know, all critical situations you, you work on, you, you stress, um, and we didn't have a great outcome this past uh, Saturday. Um, you know, uh, didn't feel like uh, I would have called anything different. We would have called anything different. We got to execute better. I mean, you got a first and goal at the two. Um, the way we run the football, uh, there's no doubt in my mind. I expect touchdowns in that situation. So I had a poor snap. Um, you know, we had a pick uh, down there, uh, came off a guy's hands and tipped it to a, a defense. So, you know, on third, and, we had a fourth and short on our own end where we're going to get a first down there, and uh, you know, we have a false start. So, execution. Uh, you can't be sloppy. You got to really lock in. Um, and and there's always going to be adversity and and throughout every game. Um, and you have to be able to come, overcome it. But when you're making that many mistakes all the way around, uh, they just start piling on top of each other. It gets harder and harder to overcome. And that's kind of where it ended up the other night. Uh, we got to do a better job of executing. We got to do a better job of coaching. We got to do, we got to be better. Um, I, I definitely see that. And I know our guys are going to respond. Um, we have a mature football team. Uh, we have a lot of great kids, men, I should say, uh, great culture. And, and we're going to bounce back. and and get better. One of the uh, silver linings of that game is that Jair Shorter was able to play again after a year being out. How nice was it to kind of see him back out there? I was awesome. He's been working hard and obviously has had, boy, he's had a lot of adversity he's had to overcome. And so I'm just proud of him for, uh, you know, getting through that uh, and stepping in and, and making some plays. It was awesome to see. Um, he's only going to get more comfortable and get better. Um, you know, it's really as, and played in over a year and really hadn't played a ton in over two years. And so just getting him back out there, getting him back in that routine and um, getting him comfortable would be important. But uh, it was exciting to get him in there and make some plays for us. Yeah, it seems like he's overcome a lot to get to this point. Are you just proud of the way he stuck with it through all that? I am. Um, you know, that's a – the last two years have, have been difficult. Um, it's been mental warfare. Uh, and so it's – it's very challenging, uh, just all the things that these men put into it, um, just to be able to play football, and then having that set, those setbacks uh, can be frustrating, um, mentally draining, uh, but he's uh, done a great job of overcoming it. And, um, you know, I'm excited to, again, see him back out there. Is he just a, 
or an unusual town, which is his size and speed, what he brings to the game? Yeah, I, th- I mean, he, he's very talented. I'm, I mean, you don't see big guys like that who can run and they're physical. Um, you know, he's a, he's a tough matchup. And, um, you know, he's uh, an experienced guy too. So, again, looking for big things out of him this season. Um, it's great to get him back out and looking forward to watching him this week. Good timing with, uh, you know, coming back home with an FCS team here, you know, maybe get you, help get you guys back on track. Yeah, I mean, the first thing I'm focused in on is getting better uh, this week and really locking into um, what we need to accomplish. Um, you know, I told our guys, you know, when you leave that meeting room uh, every single day, you ought to know what you have to work on, uh, what you're being coached to work on throughout a day. And then are you are you doing it? Are you getting better at it? Um, are you um, continuing to focus in on the things that we need to correct? And so uh, today and this week's all about our preparation. Um, we're going to... Our, our opponent deserves uh, the respect of our preparation uh, as of each and every week. And um, then we got to go in, settle in, and, and make routine plays. I think uh, the other night uh, it was almost as if at times um, trying to do too much. Just do your job. Let the guys around you do theirs. Trust each other. And that's when, um, that's when, that's when things go well. I mean, that's when you're explosive offensively. That's when everybody's just doing their job, making routine plays. It becomes explosive. Uh, and then defensively, just again, making sure you trust the man to your left and right and, and uh, play within your scheme. You know, it's against an FCS team. Uh, we saw a little bit of Grant Gannell in the fourth quarter. You know, you, you guys do go out to a pretty large lead. I'm focused in on uh, the opponent, and I, I understand your question. Uh, I respect uh, Texas Southern more than that, I can tell you. Um, but we're going to have to prepare the right way. They're going to come in here extremely excited, um, get to play uh, in our environment. Um, on the road against a Conference USA opponent. I know that uh, they'll be really excited, uh, and I know they're going to prepare the right way this week. Um, they're well coached, and so we got to focus in on that. And then uh, however the game ends up, that's kind of where you see kind of what happens. Um, I don't make decisions kind of before the game. Um, you know, everybody needs to lock in and prepare the right way. And if you if you get opportunities throughout a game, uh, you got to be able to step up and, and make the make those plays and have your head in the game. Oscar had a big game this last week, too, and he's another one of those guys that you know, had some time away from the game. Is he just kind of getting back to what we saw from him earlier in his career? Yeah, I mean, you look at it, just game two, um, coming off a season to where he hadn't done much, um, getting back in the flow of it. I thought he ran extremely hard, kind of uh, saw it really well. It was awesome to, to watch him be back out there. I mean, to be honest with you, I think game one was kind of a, a first taste of getting back into it, getting back in the flow. Um, I think he just really felt more comfortable game two, and I'm really looking forward to watching him this week. Again, he's been a, he's been a, a great player for us. He's a great teammate, um, puts a lot of hard work into it, and I'm excited to see guys like that have success. You know, Tom looked like he took a big step forward. Maybe he got a little more comfortable out there. Yeah, I think so. Did he make a jump? Yeah, I, I think uh, Tom did. Um, you know, he's got a chance to be a really good player for us. He's just got to continue to grow. And again, first game under the system. And that's, I think, you're going to see, hopefully, you want to see big jumps from game one to game two, whether it's within uh, individual players um, and overall as a team. Um, and so. I don't feel like we, we made a big jump uh, game one to two execution-wise. Mm-hmm. Felt like we executed uh, much better uh, than game one, but uh, I thought some individuals really stepped up and had some big days, and Tom was one of them. Uh, Katie Davis had played extremely well. Uh, if you look at Oscar, um, I thought in the first half, Austin played really well. Um, you know, and I think uh, just – Making sure that just don't have to press. Uh, just do what your coach do. Make routine plays. Um, everybody's locked in. I think that's the biggest thing. I thought we pressed a little bit too much uh, once some of that adversity hit. You know, you mentioned a little about Texas. Yeah, I got a couple. More. You mentioned a little about Texas. What do you know about these guys after seeing them play that big game down there? They got a lot of skill. I mean, and they're again, they're well coached. I've uh, known their coach a long time. Uh, been in kind of a air raid type system uh, offensively. Again, they have really good skill, athletic. Um, defensively, they're multiple. Um, they, they've shown both uh, four-man and three-man fronts. So 
Um, we're going to have to be uh, very uh, schooled up on kind of what they're trying to do to attack us. They kind of mix it up uh, game to game, and so we're going to have to be on our toes and be ready. So, again, I know they're going to be extremely excited. Uh, it's an opportunity for them to come uh, on the road and and try to try to beat us. And so I, I know they're going to be excited. So we're, we're going to have to prepare well. Manasseh is going to play in if everything goes right. His 51st straight game this week, I mean, nobody's played that many games in a row since Andy was here back in the early 2000s. I mean, what has he meant to you guys to play 51 straight like that? Uh, I mean, he's obviously uh, one of our team captains, a great leader. Uh, he's another coach on the field, to be honest. He makes all of our calls, and uh, he's invaluable. Um, and with his experience and the way he works, and um, it's huge, especially at that position. Um, you know, if you if you really think about it, no one really does think about it. But there's there's two people that pretty much uh, touch the ball in every snap, and that's the center and the quarterback. So it's an invaluable position. He's done a great job, and um, looking forward to uh, another great week out of him. Yeah, is that just a, a you know a huge accomplishment in a, in a position like that to be able to come back week after week after week for uh, years on end like that? Uh, there's no doubt. I mean, again, he's he's been a great player for us now for a long time, and again with COVID. Getting that extra year, uh, making the most out of his opportunities, and um, yeah. All right, cool. Thanks, Thanks Appreciate y'all. Come back and get Texas Southern this week. I know last week was a little tough. How have you guys been able to bounce back from that? Wow. Uh, we bounced back pretty well, man. You know, last week was a we had a game. This week we got another game, so we got to bounce back because if we don't, we're gonna flank. It was kind of a big one for you. You've been able to, you know, kind of get back after last year. How rewarding was it for you to go out there and play like that? It's a blessing, man. I can't do nothing but thank the man up above. Has it been a little bit of an adjustment getting back, or have you handled it in stride? No adjustment, man. You know, with an injury like that, like you just tell yourself that it never happened, which in case, like, you guys are talking about something that I don't know what happened. You know what I mean? So. It was no adjustment, man. People say, get your appetite back. I tell them, it never left. You had that big, long run there. Did that just kind of feel like, OK, I'm back now after break? Never left. Like what do you guys know about Texas Southern as you get ready to prepare for this game? Uh, we know what we got on film about them. That's it. You know, We're going to be humble, keep our head down, and on to the next game. I uh, saw a teammate that you've been teammates for a while, uh, Jair Shorter, come back after kind of a, a year hiatus. Um, just how great was it to see him back out there? It was beautiful, bro. I tell him all the time, like, I love being on the field with you because me and him kind of sort of came in at the same time. I graduated high school early, and when I got here, he kind of took me under his wing and kind of showed me the college side of life and also, like, football and how to handle things. So seeing him out there again, it was just a blessing. I was happy for him. About the other running backs, how do you all kind of combine to, you know, complement each other? You mean my brothers? Yeah, that was all my brothers, man. Kaka Rasdale, Isaiah Johnson, Ayo Adeyi, and you guys are just talking about those three. I'm talking about Preston Landis, Quaylon Farr, Debo, you know, everybody. BK Jackson, that's my roommate. Like, those are all brothers to me. Manasi's going to be playing his 51st straight game this week. You know, that's a lot of games. There's only one guy that's played that many in a row at this school before. What has he meant to you as a running back and meant to this team and just in general? When I say Mose and Sasaya Mose are like cousins to me. They took me under their wing when I first got here, teaching me a little bit of Tungan, you know, Fefe, Sape, you know what I mean? Like those are my guys. So this last game I was kind of beat up because we couldn't give him his win because, you know, like being UNT and SMU being our rivalry school, we would rather go 1-11 and and having that one game that we win is against SMU. And so losing that game, it's kind of, he was beat up about himself. And I was like, bro, let's, don't let, let's not met, let that mess up our season, and let's go get this 51st dub for you. I feel like this weekend is kind of a chance to bounce back for real, clean up some things. I mean, yes, sir, for sure. Yep. I also wanted to ask you about some of these guys that on your team that have moved up from smaller schools, like Io, you know, came over from Harding. You got a, a bunch of guys that have maybe transferred up from smaller schools. Have those guys really helped you? You know, just the guys that have moved up from smaller schools like that. Helped how? You know, it just helped you become the team that you are this year, be successful. With some of those guys. For sure, coming in from a small school, you got to come in humble because you know you come to a bigger school, 
And that's what those guys did. They came in humble and not coming in with the toxic uh, aura, so you say. So, like, yeah, they helped, uh, helped in a great way. Those guys all kind of have a chip on their shoulder, you know, guys like I. More like a boulder. What's that? More like a boulder, <laughs> especially I.O. Have you taken a few of them under your wing, kind of show? For sure. Sure, Ayo, man, that's my guy. You know, he, I'm from Arkansas, uh, Cersei. He, he was in Harden. I had a teammate from high school that was a starting center there. And so when I heard that he came from Harden, I'm like, yo, did you know, you know this guy? He's like, yeah, I know this guy. And so automatically, just big trust between me and him. You guys are glad you're kind of back at home this week, you know, after last week, you know, and kind of give you a chance to reset a little bit. Of For sure. We're always happy to be home, man. Always happy to play at home. Practice different, uh, sort of after a game like that. Or does the coaching staff try and manage uh, keep the same? Not different at all. We came in Sunday, watched the film, grabbed the game football, went outside, buried it, and never thinking about the game again. Hey Tom, so uh, how are you guys bouncing back after last week? And, you know, as you prepare for another game. Uh, you know, just stay humble. You know, keep our head down. Uh, you know, we want to come out this week with the uh, intensity to where. T uh, we want to come out this week with an intensity to where our opponent can't max. And we kind of want to keep that throughout the whole game. After looking at film this week, is there anything that you've noticed on the defense that y'all could have done better or anything? Uh, you know, just assignments, gap sound, you know, just regular stuff that, you know, we should have been able to do from the start. You, you made a big jump between week one and week two. You had a terrific game this last week. Was it just a matter of kind of settling in at a new school in the, in the Division One level? Uh, the first week I was kind of out of my head with the rain delay and all that stuff. You know, I just wasn't really in my element. And then the second week came, I felt much more like myself and everything. So hopefully, as long as I'm myself, I could keep just playing my game. So there has been a little bit of an adjustment period. Uh, I won't say like an adjustment period because I feel like I can compete here, and I feel like I proved myself. But you know, like you know, everything's a little bit different. Well, was that just something you can build from, you know, a good performance against this uh, Yeah, for sure. You know, just keep stacking days, stacking performances. Just want to be the best player I could be for the team and help the team compete. What do you guys see from Texas Southern now? you had a chance to, you know, look at them a little bit and study some film? Uh, you know, they're going to come in here. They're going to try to win just like we expect them to. And, you know, we want to shut them out. We want to, you know, get back on top, go one and all this week. You got some guys on, yeah, I know you're new to the team this year, but you got some guys on defense that have kind of moved up from smaller schools, you know, from D2, D3 schools, IO, your cornerback, guys like that. What have you seen from those guys? Have they really helped you this year? Uh, well, with myself also moving up from a smaller school, you know, I feel like the smaller school guys on defense, all like we all have like a connection and we all have like this chip on our shoulder, this humble mentality. Because we know that, you know, we came to a bigger school to compete at a bigger level. And, you know, we all just want to prove ourselves and prove that we're worthy to be here.